Chapter 10, Recursion ah! You're on your bed and your door is knocked down by a mob of zombies. Just before you're about to be eaten by them, you wake up. You're relieved that it was a dream. When you try to go back to sleep, you hear something. The door knocks down again and swarm of zombies close in. This goes on and on and on. Dream inside a dream inside a dream inside a dream. This recursion of dreams is called the recursive dream. That is exactly what a recursion method does. It keeps calling itself over and over again. You may also discover recursive phenomena in everyday life. Stand in middle of two mirrors facing each other and you'll see an endless reflection of yourself as far as the light allows. Also, there are patterns in nature which look like they've been following a recursive instructions such as snowflakes and tree branches. This repeating pattern is known as fractal. So how is this useful in programming? It is famously used in quicksort to sort data. Let's look at a recursive method called minus one. It returns a call to itself with n minus one passed on as a parameter. Let's call the method and pass in 10 as the argument. What do you think will happen? For each call, n will decrease by one, passing on parameters nine, then eight, then seven, then six, and so on. The method will be called over and over and over again until when? Uh-oh, there is no break. We just broke the program by running an infinite loop and got a stack overflow error. There is an overflowing stack of work that the computer gave up processing. How do you put a break to this infinite loop? Add a base case. By inserting a conditional statement, the method will stop when it satisfies the if condition. If n is less than zero, return n and stop. Else, keep passing on n minus one as a parameter and work towards the base case. All recursive algorithms must have these two things. One, a base case that sets the condition for when the method should stop. Two, recursive method call which works towards the base case.